I'm very passionate about African Up next on The Bottom Line, we celebrate Black History Month with four leaders who are paving the way for future generations. mislabeling students and not providing them the opportunity to thrive. Hey Jen, you were coming to see me? Twelve years ago, Michael Williams was a teacher at Walter Johnson High School when representatives from Morehouse College came to the school offering scholarships to African American males who had a 3.0 grade point average. At that time, there wasn't one. Who's got a pen? The principal called on Williams and another African-American teacher for help. It forced us to look at the opportunity achievement gap um, where we hadn't before. And so we pulled together a handful of students and polled them and asked them why they were not in those rigorous courses. Um, honestly, when we looked at it, we saw segregation or segregated school um, at Walter Johnson at the time. A lot of people, as I say, don't like when I say it, but the vast majority of black and Latino kids were in on-level courses. From that discussion came the development of the Minority Scholars Program, aimed at reducing the achievement gap and increasing minority enrollment in honors and AP courses. The program is now in 22 high schools and 10 middle schools. MSP allows teachers to recommend students to a mid-year move to an honors course. And so far, the results are nothing short of astounding. And our success rate was like 99.8%, which told us that that was a problem of ours in our making, and I say ours, our school system. Seriously, we, we are here in this second annual intra-county minority scholars program retreat, and this is huge. And we're moving. Check. Check. And that we were mislabeling students and not providing them the opportunity to thrive. And so um, we had to change that along with other things and make it more welcoming to black and Latino students. Williams says the achievement gap here in Montgomery County is directly related to the opportunity not being provided for those students to flourish. He says as a student growing up here in Montgomery County Public Schools, he faced many of the same challenges students today deal with when it comes to being given the chance to succeed. What was interesting is when we asked the kids why they weren't in those rigorous classes, the, it ran the gamut from, well, I didn't want to be the only Latino in class, which was an issue of not feeling welcome, um, which is again an issue of access and opportunity to, well, my first day of class, the teacher said, are you sure you're in the right place? Which again is an issue of not feeling welcome and not having access or the opportunity. These efforts are aimed at changing the culture. By taking the easy way out, it is showing colleges that you're not willing to challenge yourself academically. So achievement is not predicted by race, class, ethnicity, or gender and as an African-American educator. That nowadays in contemporary society. Michael Williams brings so much more to the classroom than knowledge. And it helps MSP function a lot better because we all We need to diversify teachers. And it's often said, well, there's just not enough black and Latino teachers out there. Well, maybe we need to do a better effort at digging them up, at finding it, at supporting them, and even supporting those who are already there. So I think we play a big role in terms of perception, like when um, students see teachers of color in front of the class, it's empowering in the same way that it's empowering to see an Oprah Winfrey or a Barack Obama. African Americans, a lot of Latinos, a lot of Native Americans were afraid to challenge the status quo. If we can look at ourselves in the mirror and we can say we're far enough, then the conversation is done. We are here to create positive change. But if we look at ourselves in the mirror and we realize that we're not there, we better keep talking. Everyone here is here because you've decided that you are going to be exceptional. Otherwise, we don't keep changing our society for the better. MSP is for real. MSP is here to stay. MSP must spread and we must continue this movement.
the influence that our peers have on us and how much we learn from them, you can't, you can't overestimate that. My name is Vikram Akwe. Uh, I am a senior at uh, Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. I am of Ghanaian Indian heritage. In eighth grade at Westland Middle School, Vikram noticed a classmate who he knew was a diligent worker having trouble with an assignment and wasn't getting any help. And that's how his idea for the high school success program came about. Peers, helping peers and, and students who uh, might have grown up here, students from different backgrounds coming together and helping each other, you know, learn new disciplines and, and learn new things. The high school success program takes place for three weeks during the summer, and each year it moves to a new high school. The program focuses on not only preparing students for the upcoming academic year, but it works to build bonds between the mentors and mentees and the students in the program, many of whom are from different backgrounds. Vikram says members of the group enable each other to dream big and pursue those goals. There is this idea that if you are of certain backgrounds, and, and whether those be socioeconomic or ethnic, that you should sort of strive to achieving and to a um, mediocrity in some sense. And so, you know, oh, you're doing just fine. Stay where you are. Don't push yourself too much. And I was, you know, I've never liked that. I think that uh, there's so many of my peers who are from different backgrounds with such incredible potential from whom I've learned so much. And so the high school success program really aims to encourage students to excel and to push themselves to really take ownership of their own education. We want everybody to feel like they're at school for a reason. They're at school to pursue their dreams. And his message is the high school success program approaches the student on a more holistic level, addressing the whole person rather than a specific issue. And, you know, also I think that it's important to have not only myself, but so many others like me who are doing so many great things as, as real testaments to the fact that your ethnicity and your background is no deterrent at all from doing anything that you want to do. And in fact, it can help you build bridges. It can help you connect so many different communities and people. The, the abilities that you have to bring people together, um, that I think is something unique that, that my heritage and my background affords me to do. Though he graduates this spring, he knows he has laid the groundwork for something that will build a new dimension in student success. These kids need models for those children who really believe that they can't do this. Kevin Beverly vividly remembers when he first um, entered the and, working world. Uh, day in August, I come downstairs on a Sunday morning and I, I find my mom in tears. All of a sudden I'm in tears. I'm crying. don't know why. Um, and she said, your dad's gone. And I said, well, where's, where's dad gone? He said, he's, he's left. Is he coming back? No, I don't think he's coming back. And, and she sat there and I'm crying. And then she, she kind of looked up at me and said, you got to go to work. That was when he was 10 years old. Beverly was picked up by a truck that next morning to pick tomatoes, and he's been working ever since. Today, he is president of Social and Scientific Systems, a company that works closely with NIH to improve public health worldwide. But Kevin Beverly will tell you it was the days picking tomatoes as a young boy that shaped him into the man he is today. Uh, so everybody knew that if you were good at what you were doing, you had a job. And so that was always in my head, is work hard, and the trick is to outwork the guy next to you. And that was always my brother's advice. You don't have to be as smart, you just have to outwork them. <laughs> Beverly grew up on Taylor's Island, a small community off the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay. There wasn't a lot of opportunity growing up. His older brother Larry was the first in the family to go to college, and he encouraged Kevin to work hard in school. He was always saying, you know, if, if you want off this island, you, you've got to make your own way. you got to get to college. I mean, I, I will tell anybody who asks me, it's like my, my brother walked on gravel, so I got to walk on pavement. I mean, that's how I kind of feel, because he's, he, I knew, and somebody was pushing me to go and do that next step. He started as an engineering major at the University of Maryland, but quickly realized that wasn't for him. Beverly finished with a degree in criminal justice. 
He picked up some computer science skills while at Maryland and went on to use those in a job with the National Library of Medicine. That's where his interest in public health began. He and his family have lived happily in Montgomery County for years, but today he sees what he describes as a tale of two cities. We've got a part of our county that's doing extremely well, very affluent, and, and they're very generous. Uh, but we also have a part of our county who's, who's really in pain. They're suffering. And that when, when money gets really tight, you realize you can't buy your way out of all of those ills. This is Mr. Beverly. He's Mr. the president Beverly. of uh, the College Tracks Board. So Beverly is eager to pave the way for underprivileged kids. He is chairman of the board for College Tracks, a group that helps kids through the college application process and follows their progress through school. If you solve the education piece, the other parts fall in line, right? Mm -hmm. Working to make life easier for kids in other parts of our county. And twice a month, he gathers a group of volunteers to pack food for the county Smart Snack Initiative. And I think we all need to engage how we engage um, to help make sure that the community, one, knows that we are, one, socially responsible. But again, not to use the word selfishness, but it is. There's a selfish motive there. We need these children to be as good as they can be. If you don't have the support systems in place that help you navigate this thing, you can't do it. And right now, I, I get engaged because these kids need models. And so when the, the minority and immigrant populations in this county see success, like I said, it's not, it's not about aspiration. It's about opportunity. Sure, you can have, you're, you're bright, you're smart, you got all those things, but if you don't have the support systems in place that help you navigate this thing, you can't do it. And right now, I, I get engaged because these kids need models for those children who really believe that they can't do this. Um, and I'm, I'm here to tell them that they can in terms of education. Hi, my name is Anita Powell. I was born and raised in Montgomery County, and I'm very passionate about African American history and its preservation. It all started when her young son asked her a question that caught her off guard. Well, in 1977, my son George, who was nine years old at that time, he asked the question, and he was in fourth grade, and he said, he says, what is slavery? That question was the catalyst for her first program, The Birth of a People, and she's been going strong ever since. It's not just blacks that want to know about the history. Anita Neal Powell believes it's her American. duty to make sure the stories of the hundreds of historic African-American communities here in Montgomery County are preserved. She is committed to documenting the rich history of African-Americans here before it disappears. So we have a lot of history about our black communities. We developed the first African-American map of Montgomery County. We take tours of Montgomery County. As the head of the Lincoln Park Historical Society, she has been interviewing people, gathering information, and archiving it for more than 40 years. She has given tours through the Historical Society that visit old farmlands, the Underground Railroad, and black churches and cemeteries. She says recent legislation passed by the council that protects historic cemeteries from development is a big step in paying her forefathers the respect they deserve. Our cemeteries, again, tells a lot of stories. It has a lot of history in them. And one of the things we did when we were collecting the history in the community we will also collect the history on the cemeteries and the churches. This is my father. Displaying the history of the Montgomery County African American experience through an archive is something Powell has been working towards for years. She believes this would give all residents the opportunity to explore and understand the role those historic founders played in shaping Montgomery County. You can't even imagine how much information we've collected over 40 years. You know, but we have nowhere to really share it we can begin to be proud of our history, whether it's in living history or whether or not it's history that we need to preserve in our cemeteries. I think that greatness and real success can be cultivated and uh, really made a part of the culture and a part, a part of community if um, past generations pass on what they've learned to uh, 
the next generations and really make that, you know, make it a habit, building that network of people who are there for you, of people who can uh, further whatever it is you're trying to do and push you to fulfill your goals and really push you to be the best that you can be. Thank you.